it has been nothing but fun competition since the flames have hit the ice for preseason and they are just the gift that keeps on giving your locked on flames your daily podcast on the calgary flames part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Lockdown Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Today, I thought it would be a great opportunity to point out the standouts uh, and any observations really uh, so far through training camp and preseason hockey, because my goodness, these players are ready to make it known that they're here and they they want to play. They want that roster spot. And then, of course, the first round of cuts. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts, as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your Calgary Flames every day. It goes without saying that Matthew Coronado is the most improved player, or maybe not the most improved, but the best player that we have seen so far um, in preseason. He has had multi-point games. He has significantly improved on his skating abilities, and that was the one thing that was hindering him. You know, we've known that he has a really nice shot, and that was what was really attractive about him, especially as, like, a young draft pick. You know, the Flames really needed someone that can shoot the puck. They do a whole lot of passing, but shooting (laughs) is kind of an area of concern. And, you know, it's great. He has a precise shot, and he spent the summer working with a skating coach, and she taught or, you know, worked with him and trained with him to teach him the techniques that he needs to sustain that energy and the momentum uh, for a full season and not just that shortened length that he's used to from college hockey. And I think that this is a great step in the right direction. I think that there's a very good chance that he starts the season with the Flames. I I would be very surprised if he started with the Wranglers. Um, I just, I really think that he would fit great in this Flames top nine group. I do not think that they would put him on the fourth line. He, I mean, the Flames could have like a very good fourth line, depending on, you know, how you want to arrange it and whatnot. But to me, it would make most sense for you to have Coronado in your top nine. I think that that would be, um, it'd be foolish not to do. And I'm sure (laughs) Ryan Huska is fully aware of that, especially if he wants to come out of the gate hot. And we know that preseason hockey isn't a a determination or an indication of what a team is going to be for the next six months, but things are looking good for these players. And, um, He looks hungry. He looks determined. And I think there's a different level of confidence here uh, than last year. Last year was his first pro season. So he he was adjusting. He didn't know necessarily what to expect. And now he does. So he has that year under his belt. He has the critiques. He has the reference points and the knowledge to get better uh, in what he needs to work on and what comes next. And I just have to say that pass that he had in the game against Seattle. Oh my God, that was unbelievable. And like, I have not seen a pass as smooth as that from a Flames player in probably like three years. So if we could have more of that, th- I think that would be be great. And one of the bigger things that I noticed as well with these younger players is that there is 
a, such a strong ability to read plays and not to just like be thinking about yourself. You're not thinking just about like this next step. You're able to think forward as well and how to build the play. And I think that's important too, because how many times have we just seen the flames pass the puck back and forth and then have it get intercepted? What good does that do for anyone? So for, you know, Matt Coronado and Zane Parrick to have the abilities that they have displayed thus far, um, this early on in their careers, I think that's a very good sign. And like I mentioned, multi-point games for Matt Coronado. He is coming out when he talks to the media. Yeah, he's he's not like Devin Cooley, like out and about, like ex super extroverted. But there is more confidence there. And I think that that is a really good indicator of where he's at as a player. And I hope that we do get to continue to see this and this kind of performance on the ice. Um, it would be so much fun to have him integrated with the Flames uh, NHL club. And he can tear it up in the AHL as well. But I, I think... I think it's meant to be. I think he is meant to be on the NHL roster to start the season. But coming up next, we are going to talk more about uh, some of the younger players and just how hungry they are. And they know that this is a competition. They know that this is a, a fight for your life sort of deal. And you have this opportunity to prove yourself and you're going to do it. But before we dive into any of that, I do want to take a quick break here and we will be right back after this, after a word from our friends at FanDuel. Hello, NFL fans. You can start the season big with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Uh, if you're not into the NFL, great. You can bet on some uh, NHL futures. Is it going to be Macklin Celebrini for the uh, for the Calder? Is it going to be the Nashville Predators that win the Stanley Cup? Who Who is your Stanley Cup winner? Bet now on FanDuel.com. You'll get started with two... $100 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That is FanDuel.com. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts as well as YouTube. I am just blown away, okay? Obviously. Preseason hockey is preseason hockey. We we all know this. Like there, there's a very different um, mentality and style of play in preseason hockey. Like you know, the Oilers did dress most of their or a lot of their NHLers, and the Flames still beat them uh, with their AHL roster. And same with the Kraken. I don't necessarily think that this this means like the Flames are going to, you know, win the division or have like a truly competitive season, but I I do think that that is a nice treat and I I'm I'm glad. I hope that the Flames do well. Um and one of the things that has just absolutely stood out to me is uh Jeremy Poirier. He is I feel like he's oftentimes overlooked. Uh, when it comes to the Flames' blue line prospects. And, I mean, there's a lot of options there for the Flames. And they've tried several options. Last year, Jeremy Poirier probably would have had a shot um, with Solo or Ian Kuznetsov. Um, but he suffered a very significant injury in the start of the season that um, had many people wondering if he was even going to be able to play hockey again. So it's not a surprise 
that he didn't see any time with the flames or necessarily have like a super strong Calder uh, playoff run or anything like that. Like that's, that was expected, but for him to be playing as well as he is. And I, I think, you know, for him to be standing out the way that he is in a positive way after missing that year, it is a very good sign. Uh, he did score in the first game against the Kraken and he has, he's just looked really good. And I am hopeful for him. I would absolutely agree that he is one of the players that will get a shot at the NHL more than likely through a call up. I don't think that he's necessarily going to make the roster straight out of camp. Um, but for him to be finding his footing like this and rebounding is great. Very good sign. And I really truly wish nothing but the best for him because this is just something that is, you know, <laughs> another underdog storyline for the Calgary Flames organization. Devin Cooley is so funny. He had a quote last year. <laughs> saying how none, like none of this matters. We're all going to die anyways. And while he is right, like, yes, that's, that's very true. Um, that's not like, that's not a typical NHL player quote. Like he, he still has personality in him. He hasn't had, you know, the personality media trained out of him and it's just, it's fun. It's different. And he said it himself. Like he wants to prove that he doesn't suck and he had a great performance. He had, I think it was a 937 save percentage um, against the Oilers. And he, it wasn't like he wasn't facing shots or anything. He looked good. And I think one of the other things that I really respect about him is just how highly he talked about Dustin Wolf and Dan Vladar. Dan Vladar. Um, I think that, you know, obviously you're going to give praise to your, to your teammates, but like it truly felt like authentic for, uh, from Cooley. And I think that it's, it's great because, you know, you see it a lot in like NFL training camps, like the mini camps, um, how like they'll start fighting their own teammates. I, I don't, get that energy. I don't think we really see that at all in the, in the NHL, but like there is a general sense of like camaraderie or uh, like a real brotherhood. And it's all about like, as long as they're on your team, lifting each other up. And if they're not on your team, you have to be a player of, you know, Sidney Crosby or Ovechkin caliber talent. Right. Um, I, or I, Connor McDavid, and I, I just really appreciate that while it's competitive and everyone's fighting for a spot, it's still a healthy competition, and that's important because no one you should not walk into camp and be like, okay, I'm on this roster, unless you're, you know like Jonathan Huberto, um, or like Kadri, Rasmus Sanders, like the well-established players. Um, you know, that's a given. But you should want to be working 10 times harder than the guy next to you, than the guy you're potentially sharing the net with, right? You want to be hungry and show that you can be competitive and you can live up to this pressure. I also think that Sam Morton has had a phenomenal preseason. From the moment he hit the ice for training camp in the uh, Young Stars Classic, he has been phenomenal. I think that at some point we are going to see him with the Flames. I think that it makes a lot of sense a lot of uh you know he adds a lot to the to the lineup he is fast he can skate 
he can shoot, he can pass, and he's a good player. Like all of that makes up that doesn't make him sound like makes him sound like a standard hockey player, but he brings something different to the, to the lineup, a different level of talent. And I think it's great to see. Um, obviously the flames need someone that can score and he's done that and he's shown a lot of patience too. It's not, um, necessarily something where he's just like ripping off a bunch of shots and, or ripping off a shot and then just like relying on the rebound. He, he can do both. And I think that that, uh, speaks to his accuracy and his patience and that ability to read the play. I'm very intrigued. I think, you know, these two guys are ones that are, you know, they're younger and they're more than likely not going to see time in the NHL this year. And that's Hunter Brustewich and uh, Sam Hanzik. Hanzik was getting a lot of flack in the pre or the young gun, young stars classic, uh, because he, he just isn't, uh, he, his skills aren't as refined as some of the other players in the organization, especially for a first round pick. And I think that's what frustrates people. No one really had Hanzik going to the flames or in the first round necessarily. So, you know, for the Flames to have used that first round draft pick on him, like you want to live up to that expectation. And you're seeing those strides with players like Matt Coronado, who was a first round draft pick the year prior. Um, Everyone develops at a different speed, but I do think that he has come very far, um, even in just the few short weeks since you know, working with the team during camps and the uh, getting that rust off and the dust off uh, during the Young Stars Classic. He spent his summer training with Martin Pospisil. And I think that, you know, that work ethic is there. It's just a matter of getting everything translated to game time. Hunter Brustewich is also, you know, he came over in the Elias Lindholm trade and he has come exactly as advertised. He is a good skater. He's good defensively. I I would certainly hope so as he's a defenseman and he has that offensive edge to him. Elliot Friedman, if Elliot Friedman is mentioning you on the 32 thoughts podcast, there's like, you need, it's typically, like, I would put some stock into it. But one of Elliot's friends had texted him and said, you better get ready to learn how to spell Bruce DeWitch because this kid is going to be something. I'd say that's a good sign. And I also think that the scouting reports on him have been good. And he's been, like, that one prospect or that one trade piece that has lived up to those expectations. And I think that that's great. I think it's great because that trade is a trade that keeps on giving. (laughs) And, you know, Bruce Twitch is, he's fun. I think that he's got, he's still, uh, you know, not NHL level quite yet. He's still got some, some cooking to do, but there's not a doubt in my mind. And if you're drawing comparisons to Rasmus, to a young Rasmus Anderson, from Ryan Huska, who coached a young Rasmus Anderson. Again, you're on on a good path here. But coming up next, we're going to talk about uh, the latest first, or I guess the first round of cuts, and kind of what it means that Zane Perrick is still hanging around. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back after this. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with only five, with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the daily winnings roll in. 
want to play uh, prize picks. One Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weekends of free W's. Don't miss the deal on prize picks. Download the prize picks app today and use code locked on NHL and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code locked on NHL on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. Prize picks. Run your game. We are driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. And listeners of this show get a $75 sponsored job credit uh, to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire. You need Indeed. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. Just thank you for making the show part of your day. Uh, You know, there's so many hockey podcasts out there, and I I appreciate um, the support and just hanging out um, 17 days until I'm in Calgary, and I feel like I'm going to Disney World. This is, like, so exciting to me. Um, But what also is exciting is the Flames making their first round of cuts also means the season is drawing near. I am very excited. Um, Obviously, this first round of cuts is, you know, typically the guys that were just drafted and players being released from like their ATOs um, or, you know, the OHLers, WHLers, players that aren't making the the AHL essentially. Um, and I mean, that's, there's no shame in that. Like there's, there's gotta be a first round of cuts every year and it doesn't speak to you as a player. Um, it's just the way the system really works, but one player that did escape the first round of cuts this is not a surprise to anyone. <laughs> Zane Perrick. So while the other 2024 draft picks were sent on their merry way to their respective clubs, uh, Zane Perrick hanging around, that's good. You know, it's not a secret that he's having a good camp. Everyone knew that he was a good player. There are some things he has to work on, but that's why he's still at camp, right? You have to flush out those bad habits and work on your uh, skill set and adapt it to pro hockey level, right? I think what's so interesting is that he's still there. You know, I don't, I, I don't think that it, I think he's going to get his nine games. I do. And then they'll go from there, but I don't think that it's out of the question. I don't. Um, And these, these, like I said, these first round of draft picks or first round of cuts are, they're not supposed to be shocking. Could he go in the next round of cuts? Yes, absolutely. Do I think that that's more likely? 
I yeah, I mean, just because he is not expected to report to the AHL. Um, you know, he's not at that level yet. He's going to go back to his juniors team and kick some butt there. Um, I am very impressed with what we've seen from all of the camp attendees. You know, it, there's a reason why they were invited. And, um, you know, there's there's always next year for those who didn't get that first jump today, right? But I think that Perrick does see, like I said, he does get his nine games in the NHL before having to go back to uh, the OHL. So we'll see. Um, I, I'm just, I'm very excited for him. I hope that this is a good, good year for him. Um, not even just a good year, but just, you know, a good start to his season. He's played his heart out and I fully expect there to be more good things for him. Uh, that, that goes without saying. And, you know, I think, I, I don't think you're going to see uh, Hanzik uh, necessarily cut. I think you'll, you know, he'll be part of the group that makes the Wranglers team and has to report there. Uh, <clears throat> I think that it is too early to tell for, you know, um, more of the Flames roster. I, you know who I have not mentioned this entire episode that I have been thinking about this entire episode? Jonathan Huberto. Can we talk <laughs> about Anthony Mantha? Uh, Huberto had that Huberto-esque goal uh, or pass to Anthony Mantha and Mantha scores. Pre I saw somebody say... That preseason Huberto is like prime LeBron James, and I have not stopped thinking about it. I think that, you know, you have whatever expectations you want for Jonathan Huberto. I would like to see him have more points than last year, okay? And I think that that's going to happen with his line mates this year. I think that last year we just did not see that for a number of reasons and it's okay to want more for him and it's okay to set the realistic expectation of 55 I shouldn't say realistic but the likely scenario of 55 points but that will do it for me today on Locked on Flames thank you all so much for joining me I will be back tomorrow with your latest updates out of Flames training camp and on Thursday I have a very special guest joining the show James Johnson from the wind column will be talking just the season preview and any hot takes that he has, because he is one of the smartest hockey minds out there in flames. The, the flames sphere. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. And we will be back tomorrow. Bye-bye.